Hey there folks, we finally got round to putting the glass tubing into our rig. Nice montage for you, so let's get straight into it. So of course this is all a grand experiment to see if it was viable to work with glass to put in our rig. We've used 16 mil borosilicate glass, that's a heat resistant type of glass, very commonly used um, in kind of sort of chemistry lab experiments. Really well suited to water cooling which is all about moving heat and it's very conducive to being cut and broken. We did also use some new fittings. Uh, the glass clearly is going to have very low tolerance to being flexed and bend and, you know, kind of the benefits of PETG that has a bit of flex in it are not going to be available here. So I've used some very unique fittings that help work around that problem. So how was it working with the glass? Well, I bought myself some pre-bent tubing. This is available from uh, Mayhems, which is a British company. It's absolutely fantastic. This is 16 mil stuff. And we used very traditional wheel-based glass cutter to cut the tubing. Now, this is not dissimilar to the sort of thing that you would see a plumber using to cut kind of copper piping, stuff like that, but it is specifically designed for glass. It has a cutting wheel on it, and essentially what you do is rotate the glass inside this cutter whilst pressing down to scour, or score, depending on your pronunciation, the glass. Now this creates a weak point, a fracture point if you like, uh, for the glass to break. Now, this glass is not cheap, it's about eight UK pounds, for the straight tubing, it's about 11 or 12 pounds uh, per length, this is, for the, uh, the pre-bent, 90 degree bent uh, tubing. So you really, you really don't want to get this wrong, um, notwithstanding the fact that it's a lot of effort, the cost can start to rack up. Uh, quite substantially. So I actually used um, PETG tubing, I actually used the tubing that I took out of the build um, to pre-measure the runs as it were, and then I just used a Sharpie just to mark off, uh, mark off the tubing. And using the cutter um, took a bit of getting used to. Um, I definitely found that the, the wheel skipped around a bit and you ended up with kind of multiple sort of scour marks 
around the tubing um, and most definitely I did not manage to cut around that tubing all the way successfully in the first instance and when I broke my first piece of glass I ended up with quite a jagged splinter it was not consistently smooth and I don't just mean that the edge was rough actually it, it wasn't it wasn't all perpendicular the cut there was a bit you know a shard effectively that was that was jutting out and I tried kind of, sort of gr grinding that down with the Dremel and it, that was just taking forever. I also think I had my thumbs too far away from, from the cut in the glass, so we recut the glass. Um, I definitely used less pressure initially rather than pushing down with my, uh, with my entire hand. I just used my thumb and forefinger just to create that first kind of guide cut and then increasingly ramped up the pressure. I, I found this prevented the wheel from skipping around. Um, and when I did the break after checking to make sure that that, that score mark was successfully 360 degrees around the tubing, I put my thumbs far closer together, almost touching each other, practically touching each other, um, and to actually then apply the force, kind of a pushing, a pushing forward and pulling force at the same time. And I was staggered actually at how good a break that made. I don't think it would have been appropriate to have done no sanding on it, but it, you know, it wasn't a terribly rough cut. We then used some 160 grit wet and dry paper, uh, wet, otherwise we would have worn that paper out quite quickly. It's just some circular motions round and round on the on the paper and then try to apply a bit of a, a, a camphor or chamfer, again, depending on your, your pronunciation, around the edge of it. And I'd considered using a blowtorch. I've, I've got a blowtorch for sort of other DIY stuff that I've, I've done um, to do some flame polishing on the glass, but truthfully, that edge was good enough and all we were going to do was load in a bucket load of extra effort and time for very little additional benefit. So I decided not to do that. We stuck with the sanding. Um, I also made that decision because the fittings that I had, which are Thermal Take C-Pro fittings, um, they've got quite a unique design. Essentially what you have is you have your compression collar, you have a... Uh, an O-ring, and then you have a collar that you actually fit over the tubing, and inside that collar there are a further two O-rings. That then all attach to a base plate, and there is a another O-ring that sandwiches between that base plate and the collar. You then push the compression collar down, tighten it all down, and it squeezes that one, two, three, four O-rings all together. Now I have to say, I was a bit skeptical of that design. I've never worked with a fitting where you've not effectively pushed the tubing into the fitting. You're pushing a collar on over the glass and then sandwiching it all together. So I was a bit skeptical that it would work. And I have to say these are expensive fittings. They were 10 UK pounds. I'd expect in US dollars, they're broadly to be 10 US dollars. Pound to dollar conversion rates, not what it once was. Um, but they worked really, really well. And I'm absolutely convinced for a bunch of tubing that you're not going to be able to flex in the way that you would with PETG. And I do get a little bit discombobulated sometimes with how hard I'm pushing in CPUs and creaking motherboards. And actually you end up in a place that you're just pushing the tubing effectively into place and then just clamping the collars down. Made the process way, way simpler. So... I think really the key bit for this is the pre-measuring out with the PETG. You're effectively doing your tubing twice because you have to do it in PETG to get yourself millimeter accurate in terms of your sizing, but it's well worth not doing, you know, where you may do three, four, five, six attempts at a bend um, with PETG, which is relatively inexpensive. It's not dirt cheap, still costs money, but it's relatively inexpensive. You're wasting pieces of glass that are £10 a piece. Definitely the way to go. And that combination of getting an accurate cut, a clean break, um, well-measured and fittings that allow you to just push the tubing in, I think made this a genuine pleasure to work with. Definitely viable 
for the new build. Remember, this is just an experiment. This is just an experiment working out what we want to do. We're waiting for third generation Threadripper to come out in November before we before we start the main build in the SMA A8 Revision A uh, that we've got. Um, but let's consider that experiment, notwithstanding the previous video I made about working when you're fatigued, but for the purposes of the glass tubing, we'll consider this experiment a success. So there we go, guys, glass tubing. I've only done the CPU loop. We've still got the GPU loop left to do, so expect, uh, expect that in a future video. We'll definitely uh, practice the art of brevity when we do that, because it will be a little bit of a repeat of this, but a nice montage, I'm sure, nonetheless. Uh, as always, I hope you're really well wherever in the world you are. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in my next one.